Hello and welcome to the Halliday Wine Companion Awards for 2023, the most anticipated announcement on the Australian wine calendar. I'm Tyson Stelzer, Chief Editor of the Wine Companion. And I'm Jenny Port, wine journalist and a member of the Halliday Tasting Team. We're thrilled to be bringing you the results from this year's Halliday Wine Companion Awards. But before we do, a message from our founder, James Halliday. Good evening, everyone. We're here to celebrate the birth of the 2023 Wine Companion after a nine month pregnancy. There were moments when the team of 11 midwives had furrowed brows, but the loud screams followed the moment of birth and assured all was well. Others will take you through the months of neonatal care by the production crew but I personally thank Emily Lightfoot, who surely must have wondered why she had let herself take on the management of the tasters, including myself. I know it's a platitude to once again thank the support of all 1,128 wineries that send samples to the tasters and answered all manner of queries, but without that support, there would be no wine companion to celebrate. So, Welcome everyone to all of you here tonight. Thank you, James. We have so much exciting news to announce and we invite everybody to join the conversation by following at Wine Companion on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. The hashtag is Holiday 2023. You can also subscribe to become a member and receive news and updates on the world of wine at winecompanion.com.au. We're pleased to announce that the 2023 edition of the Halliday Wine Companion will be available online and in bookstores nationally tomorrow, 4th of August. And we'd also like to take a moment to officially thank our sponsors, Liebherr, Riedel, Pentridge Cellars and Different Drop for bringing the Halliday Wine Companion Awards to life. And now for what we've all been waiting for, the 2023 awards. The culmination of a year of tasting by the Halliday Tasting Team. James Halliday, of course, Jenny, myself, Jane Faulkner, Aaron Larkin, Ned Goodwin, MW, and for the first time, Philip Rich and Dave Brooks. Over the course of the tasting year, we've tasted and reviewed more than 8,000 wines from all over the country. After selecting our favourites, the eight of us then gathered for three days at Mitchelton Winery in the Gamby, Victoria, back in March where over a series of tastings, which we did blind for the very first time, and much discussion, <laughs> a lot of discussion, so uh, we determined this year's winners. This all comes in the midst of what's actually been quite a challenging year for Australian wine. Declining domestic consumption, increasing imports and stifled exports have really thrown the balance of supply and demand into a complete state of disarray. Wine dumping seems to be back in force in retail land like we haven't seen in 15 years. And yet the great wines of the world have never been more highly sought after or more scarce. In this volatile environment, it's never been more important for us as tasters to confidently distinguish between the truly great wines of the world and the ocean of ho-hum. And for all of us as buyers to anticipate the top vintages and to be ready to pounce the moment they land. This is why we've expanded our tasting team this year, why we're releasing more reviews more often through the Halliday magazine and the website, and why tonight's announcement of our winners is surrounded in an incredible buzz of expectation. Now, let's take a look at what the rest of the team had to say. What makes a great wine? It moves you. It'll make your heart skip a beat. The yearning, the pining to go back for another taste. We each gather all of our favourite wines from across the country and put them together on the table. The classics are being done better than ever. Alongside the classics, there will be some exciting new styles. We have seen some unexpected surprises. Newer makers coming forward with fantastic wines that really show the best standard in the country. We're beginning to be a bit more adventurous. We're in a golden age for Australian wine at the moment. I think it's never been a more exciting period. We are now seeing a whole raft of beautiful wines from 2021. It's just such a thrill to taste a lineup of wines and then for all the judges to stop at the end of the flight and go, oh my gosh, that was just a phenomenal experience. 
first award for the year is for Best New Winery. Best New Winery goes to the best winery submitting to the Companion for the very first time. Last year this prize went to Place of Changing Winds in Macedon. This year we whittled over 50 new wineries down to a short list of 10. The ultimate winner submitted eight wines deemed outstanding or highly recommended by the panel. It's of course impossible for a winery to swing in out of nowhere and perform at such a high level. So it's perhaps no surprise that our winner is from a sixth generation winemaker. And the winner of Best New Winery presented by Pentridge Cellars is Living Roots from the Adelaide Hills. Here's a list of the finalists and then we'll hear from the winner. The winner of the best new winery is Living Roots Adelaide Hills. In their own words, Living Roots is an urban winery in the Finger Lakes region of New York and a not so urban winery in the Adelaide Hills region of South Australia. Sixth generation South Australian winemaker Sebastian Hardy and his New York marker to wife Colleen teamed up to produce eight outstanding wines to the tune of just 400 dozen bottles, all priced under forty dollars. We're both from really amazing wine regions. Me from the Finger Lakes in upstate New York, Seb from Kaipo in the Adelaide Hills. And Living Roots was really about highlighting the natural strengths of each of these regions, allowing us to go back and forth and do vintage in each place every year. Yeah, no, it's definitely really tricky uh, doing the two harvests a year and managing to do it. Obviously, the, the different times of the year, the two harvests, so it makes it physically possible and to make a really wide range of styles with minimal input. So everything from, you know, sparklings through to fortifieds, we can do really well, you know, given the different climates that we're each from. After the last few hard years for winemakers, isn't it great to see so many exciting wineries emerging? Uh, it's certainly made the judging for this award that bit harder. Living Roots scored impressively with a number of judges which put it across the line but every finalist should feel pleased. They are wineries to watch. A huge and well-deserved congratulations to Living Roots. The next set of awards we're excited to announce are for the best sparkling wines. In addition to sparkling white and sparkling red, last year we introduced our sparkling rosé of the year for the first time. As expected, Australia's sparkling epicentre of Tasmania again dominated our white and rosé shortlists with the Adelaide Hills, Yarra Valley and King Valley mounting a more than noble challenge. But it was actually ultimately one of Australia's highest elevation regions of orange in New South Wales that ultimately came forward. Sparkling red came down to a taste off between the Barossa and Victoria's Alpine Valleys. We are proud to announce the awards for our sparkling white, rosé and red wine of the year and our grand champion, sparkling of the year. The winner of the sparkling white of the year is Gilbert Family Wines Blanc de Blanc Chardonnay 2016. The winner of the sparkling rosé of the year is Piper's Brook Vineyard Kreglinger Brut Rosé 2017. The winner of the Sparkling Red of the Year is Toysner MC Sparkling Shiraz 2017. The winner of the Sparkling Wine of the Year is Gilbert Family Wines Blanc de Blanc Chardonnay 2016. Congratulations again to Piper's Brook, Toysner and of course Gilbert Family Wines for winning Sparkling Wine of the Year with their Blanc de Blanc Chardonnay 2016. The next award for the evening is for Best Value Winery. Now, for an important clarification, best value doesn't mean the cheapest. Value for money can come at any price point. And while the winner of this award does have many wines available for under 
or $30. What we're looking for is how special those wines are for that price. In the Wine Companion this year, there are over 1,300 value rosettes awarded. So competition for this category was tight, so tight. But there can only be one winner. The winner of Best Value Winery for 2023 is Deep Woods Estate in Margaret River. Congratulations. The winner of the best value winery is Deepwoods Estate, Margaret River. Such is the flagrant disregard for price point quality at this estate that every tier over delivers in this stunning range of wines. No brand in the country delivers finer value from sub $20 all the way to reserve level. Led by former winemaker of the year, Julian Langworthy, all 16 thrilling wines submitted by Deepwoods Estate this year are every bit worthy of your cellar. Value in wine means the delivery of a beautiful, regional, distinctive product. And I think Deep Woods does that in spades at every price point. All about a team effort. Everyone's really committed to delivering a wonderful product and it's all those 5% extra additional efforts that make great wines. It's this wonderful site in Margaret River that we have um, and the quality of that shines through at every price point, I feel. To describe our winemaking style at Deep Woods would be to try and capture the beauty and the absolute quality in each parcel. I think a lot of things have changed. Um, we're a much bigger brand than we once were. We have a lot more products in the range, but at its core, it's still the same um, ethos and the same drive to make the greatest wines in Margaret River and if not the greatest wines in the world. So some things have changed and some things remain the same. Wine storage cabinets offer similar conditions to a wine cellar. Quality down to the very last detail. Liebherr provides wine cabinets that are perfectly tailored for every need. Wine is pleasure. Wine is a way of life. Liebherr, wine cabinets for the ultimate enjoyment of wine. Halliday Wine Companion is the home of great Australian wine. Discover winecompanion.com.au, which features more than 160,000 tasting notes to help you navigate your next wine purchase. Become a Halliday member and you'll receive weekly tasting note releases, our bi-monthly Halliday magazine, and your own personal Halliday virtual cellar to store and create wine wish lists. Plus, let us select, share, and deliver outstanding wines to your door every month when you join Halliday Wine Club. Visit winecompanion.com.au to become a member and you'll never drink a bad bottle of wine again. The next awards we're excited to announce are for our two strongest white wine categories of the year, Chardonnay and Riesling. These two categories went head to head in the final judging, didn't they? It sure did. It was among one of the more exciting tugs of war we've seen in years. It certainly was. Mm. Our results this year are really a showcase for the diversity of Riesling with no fewer than 15 regions represented in our shortlist, confidently led by the Clare Valley, Eden Valley and Tasmania. The cool and classic 2021 vintage I reckon must be one of the finest we've seen in yep. southeastern Australia, at least since maybe even 2002, yep. and rightfully dominates our lineup. Diversity is the theme of our two winners also, and they could not have been crafted in more disparate ways. Chardonnay ranked a very close third behind Shiraz and Cabernet as our strongest category this year. 
Margaret River towered above all others, followed by the Yarra Valley. And special mention must go to our very close runners up of Oak Ridge 864 and Penfold Yatana, both of which incidentally were in our top three last year too. And here are the winners. The joint winners of the Riesling of the Year are Best Wines Food Referment Riesling 2021. and Henschke Julius Riesling 2021. The winner of the Chardonnay of the Year is Stella Bella Wines Luminosa Chardonnay 2020. A huge congratulations to Bests, Henschke and Stella Bella for winning Riesling of the Year and Chardonnay of the Year. The next award is for Dark Horse Winery of the Year. The Dark Horse Award goes to a winery that is not new to the Companion, but it has achieved five stars for the first time this year. We're thrilled to announce that the winner of this award for 2023 is Margaret Rivers Las Vino. The winner of the Dark Horse of the Year is Los Vino Margaret River. Nick Peterkin was born with pedigree winemaking blood in his veins, but it was his own determination and ingenuity that set apart his inimitable Los Vino. Pushing the boundaries with out of the box thinking is his status quo, be it in alternative fermentation vessels, wildly extended time on skins, or experimental fermentations. His are wines of expressive individuality, eliciting unexpected descriptors, yet possessing a classicism and accuracy of sight that define sheer brilliance. To be awarded the Dark Horse Winery of the Year feels really good, obviously. So LUST stands for luck, art and science, and that's how we sort of approach the winemaking. The aim for me personally is to make wines that are of very high quality, but a little bit different. What I love about Margaret River, it's the proximity of the coast, it's the beauty, it's the surf, it's the art, and it's just sort of this purity and you know the freshness of the air. It creates the most perfect place to grow grapes. Every year we do different techniques or we apply different techniques. Um, it's the discovery of something that appeals to me. But most of the vineyards, when you go to, what's special about them, you feel something. Congratulations to all the finalists and of course to Las Vino. It's time now to announce the rest of the winners in the white wine category, Semillon, Sauvignon Blanc, Other Whites and Sweet Wine of the Year. And of course, White Wine of the Year. The winner of the Semillon of the Year is Brokenwood Sunshine Vineyard Semillon 2014. The winner of the Sauvignon Blanc of the Year is Flowstone Wines Queen of the Earth Sauvignon Blanc 2020. The winner of the Other White and Blend of the Year is Briar Ridge Vineyard Albarino 2021. The winner of the Sweet Wine of the Year is Brown Brothers Patricia Noble Riesling 2019. The winner of the White Wine of the Year is Best Wines Food Referment Riesling 2021.
to celebrate the launch of the 2023 Halliday Wine Companion and the release of over 8,000 new tasting notes on August 4, we're giving you the opportunity to win the ultimate awards pack worth more than $3,000. This year's prize features award-winning wines and the perfect accessories from Riedel, Coravan and more. The prize also includes a Lee Bear 60 bottle wine fridge. To enter, simply visit winecompanion.com.au and tell us in 25 words or less which wine you would choose as your wine of the year and why. Entries close midnight, August 23. Good luck. Across the length and breadth of the country in the last few years, we've seen some smashing vintages, especially a great array of 2021 wines. These were definitely on show in the final awards tasting. Among the really deserving winners, there were a few surprises too. It was wonderful to see a Hunter Valley El Barino win the other white category. In the face of climate change, producers are going to need to start relying on Mediterranean varieties more and more, but it seems that won't be a problem for many of them. The dominance of the Hunter Valley in our Semillon list goes without saying, but to put forward standouts from no fewer than nine vintages this year is grand testimony to the global uniqueness of this region. For Sauvignon Blanc, it's not such a foregone conclusion. It tends to oscillate between Margaret River and the Adelaide Hills, according to whichever was blessed with the finest vintage. The Adelaide Hills took the honours this year, thanks to the spectacular 2021 season. And special mention needs to go also to Terra Terre, which very nearly backed up last year's win. The next award is for Viticulturist of the Year. This was a category that we introduced last year for the first time to recognise the unsung heroes who bring grapes to life and set them on a path to making great wines. We are tasters, not viticultural scrutineers, so ultimately our winner is selected according to the wines submitted for this year's companion that most fully exemplify best practice in the vineyard. This was another really competitive category and everyone nominated here should be incredibly proud of their work and their essential role in making great wine. Here are the finalists and then we'll hear from the winner, Tom Carson of Serret. The winner of the Viticulturist of the Year is Tom Carson of Serret Yarra Valley. Winning Viticulturalist of the Year was honestly a real surprise. We don't really separate the role of winemaking and viticulture. Everything's interconnected. And when we're in the vineyard, we're just thinking about producing the best possible fruit to produce the best possible wine we can. And we sort of want to capture that, you know, the spirit of the time and place that the wines come from and really trying to translate that season and capture that, you know, the spirit of the time and place in the bottle. There was more than a little courage in Tom and Nadej Carson's decision to plant one hectare of vines on the Yarra Valley floor 21 years ago. A planting density more than four times the Australian average was inspired by the great vineyards of Europe. And the decision to include varieties better suited to warmer climates proved to be more than prudent. So successful were the results that Tom Carson is the only nominee this year to be shortlisted as a finalist not only for Viticulturist of the Year, but also Winemaker of the Year and Winery of the Year. It was to try to do things a little bit differently and then trying to sort of mould our own little close planted philosophy around that. Congratulations to Tom Carson, who really is just the most phenomenal vineyard. Now it's time to find out who's been awarded Rosé of the Year, Pinot Noir of the Year, Grenache of the Year and Shiraz of the Year. The winner of the Rosé of the Year is Spinifex Lux 2021. The winner of the Pinot Noir of the Year is Lostoft La Maison Pinot Noir 2020. The winner of the Grenache and Grenache Blend of the Year is Chalk Hill Alpha Crucius Old Vine Grenache 2020.
The winner of the Shiraz of the Year is Battles Wine Granitus Shiraz 2020. While Tasmania put forth both our first and second place Pinot Noirs, it was ultimately the Yarra Valley that dominated our list of highlights this year. In the world of Grenache, McLaren Vale took top honours, confidently followed by the Barossa. And in an increasingly warming world, the rise of cooler regions like Franklin River and the Yarra Valley is a trend to watch closely. Shiraz is again Australia's leading variety and on sheer weight of top scoring wines alone, but for its prolific plantings across every region in the country, just 16 made our shortlist. And it's most exciting of all to see Perth Hills ascend among the greats to top this year's coveted list. Yes, I think we need to thank Erin Larkin for bringing Battles Granitus 2020 Shiraz to our attention and entering it in the final tasting. It was a revelation, both in the quality of the wine and the emergence of the Perth Hills as a serious producer of Shiraz. Now it's time to present one of the biggest and most exciting awards of the evening, Winemaker of the Year, brought to you by Riedel. Tyson, what do you say makes a great winemaker? Like our viticulturist award, as tasters, we're looking for the winemaker whose wine submitted this year most exemplify best winemaking practice. Of course, even in the smallest winery, credit's never due only to one individual. So in our shortlist of nominations for Winemaker of the Year, we also recognise and applaud the teams around them. Here's our shortlist before we hear from our winner, Glenn Goodall of Xanadu Wines, Margaret River. The winner of the Winemaker of the Year is Glenn Goodall of Xanadu, Margaret River. A belief that the vineyard is central to the success of the wine has steered Glenn's winemaking decisions to champion terroir at every level. His leadership, focus and attention to the finest details have defined excellence at every price point. His generosity with his time and knowledge have benefited his peers locally and nationally. With an open nature and a generous smile, Glenn Goodall is widely loved, well respected, and every bit deserving of the accolade of Winemaker of the Year. Oh, being awarded the Halliday Winemaker of the Year is an amazing honour. Overwhelmed, it's, it's amazing. I think that the secret to making great wine, keep it simple. The thing that I value the most is um, spending time in the vineyard, walking a lot of rows. That's the key. Trying to capture you know, what, the, what the vineyard best represents so that yeah, the loudest voice in the glass is actually the vineyard, not, not the winemaker. Margaret River is special to a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. I just think really is utopia when it comes to um, viticulture, so, and it's something that I never take for granted. I've always been lucky enough to have great staff and, and great relationships with growers and I think that all ties into uh, making, making good booze. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Back in the early 90s, James Halliday was one of the original adopters of the Riedel concept and philosophy in Australia. He was a true pioneer of our brand and understood that Riedel allowed you to profile taste and experience wines at their best. Tonight, we are proud to say we still manufacture independently, drive our own innovations, and we're always mindful of our environmental impact. There is no Riedel glassware without wine, so we are thrilled to support tonight's Winemaker of the Year Award. A huge congratulations to Glenn Goodall, who might also be equally deserving of the award for Best Bloke of the Year. Indeed. I'd like to take this moment to quickly congratulate our People's Choice winner. It's no mean feat to be voted the best in terms of winery experiences by a very discerning public. Here is the winner of the People's Choice Award this year. Up next is the award for Winery of the Year, presented by Liebherr. Winery of the Year starts in the hearts and minds and scores given by individual tasting team members. Some wines sing, some wines don't, but when a winery presents a series of immaculate wines, they will always be a contender for Winery of the Year. 
This is perhaps the most coveted award of them all, based on the full suite of wines submitted this year, with a glance to the wines of recent history too. Here's the shortlist. The winner of the Winery of the Year is Pooley Wines Tasmania. Deep in Tasmania's Coal River Valley, the vineyards of Pooley Estate possess a native Tasmanian spirit of rugged and beautiful landscapes. Capturing these places eloquently in every bottle has elevated this fabled family winery to the very pinnacle of Australian Pinot Noir, Chardonnay and Riesling. The trajectory of ascension of their wines has been spectacular, with quality rising emphatically with each season since Anna Pooley and husband Justin Bubb returned to Tasmania a decade ago. Crafted with intuition and talent, every tool of winemaking is applied purposefully, sensitively and yet quite courageously, intricately engineered to heighten that breathtaking sense of place. It feels amazing to win one of the year. An incredible recognition of a lot of hard work by everyone in the business to get to this point. To this day, my father's still involved in the business. And then my brother is in sales and my husband and I make the wine. So it really is all of us working together to achieve the same goals. That knowledge and that deep understanding and respect of your site allows you to make great wine because the decisions you make are always keeping that site expression at front of your mind and at the end of the day I think the wine will always be better for it. Making wine from the ground up, letting the, the site speak through the wine, I think that's the key. <laughs>Special congratulations has to go to the legendary Mount Mary, which celebrated its 50th anniversary last year and is a worthy winner of Red Wine of the Year with the quintessential cool climate Cabernet Blend. Our final announcement is the big one, Wine of the Year. But first, a special thanks to the thousands of wineries across the country who submitted their wines to us this year. 
the Halliday Wine Companion owes its existence to you all. If there's anything to read into this year's results, it's that you're in the running for the top awards of the year if you're a large winery or a small winery, if you're in the middle of a famous region, or even somewhere in a remote outpost. Thanks also to the wider wine industry for all of your support and to our readers for everything you've done throughout the year. Our wine of the year is presented by Different Drop. Again this year we lined up all the winners of our 18 varietal categories and tasted them all again blind to find the true best of the best. Here it is. The winner of the wine of the year is Best's Wines Foudre Ferment Riesling 2021. Hailing from this fabled estate in Great Western, it's elevated to new heights this year by the wonderfully classic and enduring vintage of 2021. There's no shortage of courage employed in its creation either, utilising extended skin contact, wild fermentation and maturation on lees in a spectacular and huge oak foudre. As much about texture, depth and longevity as it is about drive and sheer brilliance. You've got one ingredient to work with essentially when you're making wine and it's grapes and it comes from one source which is a vineyard. Wines tell a story about where they're from more so than any other agricultural product. They're transformed in that process of winemaking into a drink that tells a story of where it's from, um, how it's been made, the, the vintage really important. You only get so many opportunities to make good wines in your life so you really want to make sure you're giving it every chance to be something special. The biggest secret to making great wine is having a good team. If you get the team right you've got a lot better chance of everyone working together and that's what I think helps make a great wine. Congratulations to Best Wines for taking the Best Wine of the Year award to see a $35 Riesling win Wine of the Year shows Riesling remains one of the most exciting, not to mention innovative, classic grapes of Australia. The food referment Riesling is one of those pure genius moments, a chance taken with the most fantastic results. A very warm congratulations again to Bests and to all our winners this year. And thanks to our sponsors, Lieber, Riedel, Pentridge Cellars, and different drop. Thanks to the Halliday tasting team of James, Jenny, Jane, Ned, Erin, Philip and Dave. Finally, a special thanks to the Halliday Companion tasting manager Emily Lightfoot and the Full Hardy Grant publishing team and HGX. On behalf of Halliday Wine Companion I'd like to thank the Australian wine industry for their ongoing support and for submitting their incredible wines. Be sure to keep your eye on winecompanion.com.au for all the winner details and the magazine where you'll be able to read more about these awards. The book is available from tomorrow in all good bookstores and via the Wine Companion website. Holiday members will also be able to access the more than 8,000 tasting notes and ratings from this edition online, so be sure to sign up and explore the selections. Thank you for tuning in for the 2023 Halliday Wine Companion Awards. Our final thanks is to James Halliday himself for his legacy, vision and leadership. I still don't know quite how he's done it himself for more than 35 <laughs> years. And until next year, good night. <laughs>